Ah, guys, hurry up. Come here. Ah, ah, we just missed it. It was just snowing so much. All right, so I just got up. I'm going to go run and grab a coffee real quick, and I'll be right back, and we'll get on with today's video. I promise. One sec. All right, there we go. So about a week ago, I dropped a video where I tore down my Sakani X60. You can see it, you know, over here in the background. And everything went pretty well. I didn't poke around too much, but in the comments for that video, a viewer, Omar Roshdi, I hope I got that right, man, asked if I would do a video, a follow-up video, where I replace the fan in the Sakani with a new fan since the fan that comes in it is like super loud and annoying. And so of course I said yes, and actually that's a pretty good segue. I should say now that if there's ever anything you wanna see, make sure you tell me down in the comments down below. Uh, at this stage in the, uh, the life cycle of this channel, I am totally happy to try to make a video about pretty much anything you wanna see if I can afford to do it. And I should also say while I'm at it, uh, you know, if you like this video, give the uh, thumbs up down there. Make sure you subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Uh, like I said, comments and check the description for like links to, you know, details and specs and all that sort of good stuff. But anyway, yeah, I pretty much just like right away dug into the light, uh, got the specs that I need. Uh, then I went on Amazon, ordered a couple fans. I actually have one right here. And so if you want to replace your fan without having to like mod the case or the heat sink to this thing, which I really don't recommend doing, then you're gonna need to get a 60 by 60 by 10 millimeter fan. Although you'll see in the video that I actually think that you can fit a 60 by 60 by 15 millimeter fan like this one uh, inside the case. The only caveat there is that you're gonna need new screws in order to get this thing on the heat sink because obviously they need to be half a centimeter longer, but I say obviously I didn't think of it. So I'm telling you, if that's something you wanna do, you're gonna need longer screws. The other thing is they need to be 12 volts. Uh, they need to be two pins and have a two pin connector, which is something that's going to be very interesting when it comes up later. Uh, and they have to be, you know, like 100 milliamps or less really. So like 0.1 amps or less. So actually before we even dig in, 60 by 60 by 10 millimeter fan is already a terrible choice because they only come in crappy. There are no good 60 by 60 by 10 millimeter fans. Companies like Noctua who make really nice silent fans don't make them in that size. Their minimum height is something like 25 millimeters for the size range. So you can't really get like a super nice fan. That's not to say that these aren't quieter. They probably are and we'll check that out too. Just, just so you know, it's like, it's not gonna be some major step up in fans. But anyway, look, if you want to replace the fan in your light, I actually kind of recommend it and you'll see why. Uh, but I will tell you that if you plan on following what I do in this video, that you're gonna wanna watch the entire video first before you start tearing apart your light. Because as I was digging through, I found a couple things that they'll make you crazy. It's, I, I don't know what the hell they were doing. And so, you know, make sure you watch all the way through so you see, because it's like, it happens to me in real time and it was very frustrating. Uh, but yeah, anyway, you'll see. So let's just, let's get on with it. Come on. Here's the cheapo fan that I picked up off Amazon. It is Wathai brand, which I've never heard of, but hopefully they're pretty good. Uh, like I said, it's 60 by 10 millimeters, um, 0.1 amps. Uh, yeah, and all the other specs that I said before. I also picked up a 60 by 15 millimeter fan. It's uh, made by Ambiond. I don't know if it's any better, but you know, we'll see that later in the video. So now as for the actual light, the only thing you really gotta do here uh, is take off the stuff on the front. So this Bowens mount with the three screws that you see here, uh, those are uh, hex screws, so you need an Allen key. And just like any of these sort of things, make sure you're using the right size Allen key and screwdriver and everything else so you don't go stripping things and making your life a whole bunch more difficult. So after we get the Bowens mount off, we just take the four screws out so that we can get this dome off of the, uh, the front of the COB light. And then taking that off exposes the mounting plate for the uh, the heat sink that's on the COB. Actually, the heat sink on this thing is really nice. So we're just gonna remove the four screws that hold the heat sink to the mounting plate. Those are also hex screws. Once you get those off, you see that there are another four screws just on the outside of those. And that is what's securing this face plate, the mounting plate to the chassis. So now you remove those four screws and finally we're in. 
So now that we got this big honking heat sink exposed, you're gonna just sort of like pull it out very carefully, making sure that you don't yank on the wires too hard. Then you can sort of swing it out of the chassis and expose the fan. Now, once you get this far, you're just gonna follow the, uh, the connector wire back for the fan and pull it out, comes out pretty easily. And then you can swing the entire assembly out a little bit better, get really good access to the fan. Now that we're this far, you're just gonna take these last four screws out uh, and that will remove the, the fan from the heat sink and we're good to go, we're ready to replace. So the first thing I tried out was this uh, 60 by 15 millimeter. Like I said, I had the wrong screws, but you can see the clearance is pretty tight to the heat sink. So just holding it with my fingers and then trying to like wedge it back into the chassis, you can see that almost fits. I mean, I'm only off by like a millimeter or something. So I think once this thing's screwed down that it's safe to say that it would fit pretty much perfectly. And now when I reached back to grab the other fan, I noticed something funny about the original fan and you can see it right here. This was originally a three pin fan, oh my God, that they actually cut the third wire off of. And then they soldered a new connector instead of just going with an actual, you know, two pin fan from the get go. And so almost certainly what happened is that there's a company that already made cheapo fans and then they, you know, went out of business or something like that uh, and had to dump a bunch of fans, Sakani picked them up and had some poor schlub just chop this extra wire off and have to like solder all these new connectors on. This is certainly non-optimal and is almost reason enough to replace the fan in these things. And now even the connector that they soldered on is a little bit weird and that's something that we're gonna take a look at later. So remember what I said, stick around. When we get to the end, you're gonna see why this is a big deal. So, okay, fair enough. I went ahead and I just put on the uh, 60 by 10 millimeter replacement fan, the Wathai. Of course, it fits perfectly. That's, you know, what you should expect. It's the same size. So I just tighten that down with all the same hardware that was already on there, you know, just slap the light back together and see what's gonna happen. And I turn it on and of course the light functions properly, but the fan is not spinning. So what is going on here? And so now this is where I did all the hard work for you guys. I took the control panel off, which I've already done a few times and probed around. And now when I probe the connector, you know, I, I put a multimeter on where like, you know, I, I had the positive on the positive lead, negative on the negative lead, but I was getting negative 12 volts. So what this means is that when Sakani designed the board, they accidentally switched the polarity of the connector for the fan. And so now rather than have a whole bunch more circuit boards printed up and replace that hardware, they went ahead, it was cheaper for them to actually buy these like, you know, any fan, whatever the cheapest fan was they could find, which is those three pin ones, chop off all the, the wiring and then rewire backwards a two pin connector. And so what that means for us is that we have to take the plastic connector for our fan. We have to push the pins out because they're held in by a little latch. And so you can see me sort of forcing those out with these like fine tip tweezers. But you can use pretty much anything like a small nail or a pin or something. If you just sort of push down the latch and then wiggle it while you're pulling, they'll come right out. And now you just wanna put those back in backwards. You wanna put the red one where the black one was, the black one where the red one was, and then you go ahead and plug it into the board and it's going to work. So to save yourself some work, if this is something you're gonna do, this is the first step you wanna take. You want to switch these pins before you get started. Here's a quick loudness comparison between the three. You can see that the new 60 by 10 millimeter fan outperforms the other two, but only barely. So take it for what it's worth and you know, just do whatever's best for your situation. There you have it. That was both enlightening and disturbing. Now I knew when I bought a cheap light that there would be, you know, a couple of corners cut here and there. And really in the end, it's like, it's nothing that is a deal breaker when it comes to just using a decent light. But still, man, come on, who has three pin fans that they, you know, like they have some poor guy chopping the the uh, the connector off and like, you know, soldering on this new connector and then they're doing that backwards. I mean, come on. And now that is what you get if you buy nicer products, if you can afford it, you know, something like the Aperture 120D. There is no way that you're going to see bodges and stuff like you see in that light. That is just this is wrong. All right, guys, that was really interesting and kind of fun. So, you know, if you liked it, make sure you hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe. Like I said, it helps the channel an awful lot. Check the description. I'll put any sort of like specs or anything like that that need to be in there. That's where it'll be. Uh, I'll put links to the fans. Those are 
almost certainly going to be affiliate links. So if you click through those, you know, that's a big thumbs up uh, and comment down below. Again, if there's ever anything you want to see, just let me know and I will see you next time.